Hello, 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 and welcome. We're back for 14, session 14. Now you might be going, oh my gosh, how did we get to session 14? Well, we came, the panel came together as a consensus and we decided just like in an elevator, there's no 13th floor, there'll be no 13th session, right, Steve Parker? I mean, it's I, unlucky. I, we, you can't have an unlucky, unlu unlucky floor or an unlucky episode. Well, especially when we have this group of people bringing the latest that dentistry needs and wants post-pandemic, or still in, in, in the middle of it, depending on how you look at it. And we are so grateful to have Dr. Margaret Scarlett with us today. Are you kidding? It's like we're in the presence of rock star. Hello. Thank you for being here all the way from Atlanta with that luxurious backdrop. Um, and I know that that's not a green screen, Margaret. So I'm so grateful that you're here. Margaret is the expert in dentistry, the best in the world at infectious disease and chronic disease prevention. She's a specialist, she's a dentist. She is the consultant to the CDC, the WHO, Pan American Health Organization, and the United States Agency for International Development. She's got a resume longer than uh, my hair was last week. And not bad, that's a pretty good dad joke, right? I'm going with that. Um, and so we're very grateful to have you. And we're gonna to get to you in a few moments. We're just gonna go through our panel, Margaret, but thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. We're so grateful that you're here. Glad to be here. You bet, you bet. So it's, it's, it's game time, uh, friends. And um, man, uh, I just wanna start out and we'll get to Bob right after I give you this. But, um, oh, we've been blessed with the PPP, baby, because we now have 24 weeks to get that completely um, forgiven. Now here, I wanna give you a, a quick look, a quick new look at how to manage this because this really changes the game. One of the things to look at is, let's just say you got $100,000. Consider that $100,000 as profit. If you work on a 75% overhead, I'm just gonna give you some quick numbers. If you work on a 75% overhead, that means that you profit 25%. So if you take that 100,000 and divide by 0.25, you get $400,000. You have to produce $400,000 over the three months in order, like in order to really understand this, if you're doing 100,000 a month and you're close for three months, you are actually ahead in 2020. Now, Steve, I wanna just, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to dialogue with Bob on this. This is insane because most people think they're at a deficit because they were shut down for three months. And Bob, let's talk about this. I want to make sure I articulated myself well here. Gary, you did good. All right, good. <laughs> so, Bob, think about it. It's like handing somebody 100000 in profit. What I want doctors and to understand is, how much do you need to produce in order to get that $100,000? You would need to produce four, you know, actually collect 400. And if you write 20% off, you got to produce 480. If you're closed for three months and you're used to doing 100,000 a month, you're actually ahead with this pandemic. You're actually ahead of the game, right, Bob? Did I do my math well? No, you did it well. And you always think outside the box, Gary. I always love that about you. So Thank you. Um, I wanted to um, also share First of all, um, everybody's been talking about their hair. I haven't seen really any change in mind ever since the beginning. <laughs> so um, I'm just really thinking I'm just gonna stay this way forever. Um, <laughs> second of all, I just wanna say um, how great it is to always be on these uh, webinars. I love uh, joining everyone here today um, and, and for the past 14 times. Uh, and I just, I brought up in the very beginning when I first uh, started with everyone, uh, you know, a really a big slogan. And I think that uh, that this really is what it is that we have, uh, you know, really been going through the past couple of months, weeks, and so on, is what is distracting you? And I think that this is something that we all really need to look at. So first of all, before I get into that, I really want to share with you the latest updates that Gary had brought up. Um, obviously, it's all about uh, that you're able to now extend your um, PPP uh, loan from having eight weeks to 24 weeks, which is great. Uh, your payroll expense requirement is now at 60% instead of 75%. Um, your extended paycheck, um, the loan itself, 
um, if it turns into an actual loan after it has after the portion has been forgiven, um, it has been extended to five years instead of the two years that they actually um, had before. Uh, so they have been making some improvements on that. Uh, business owners have up until December 31st of 2020 to restore their staffing um, instead of July uh, instead of June uh, 30th. Um, there's two exceptions to that though, and I wanted to bring these up. Um, obviously, it allows, uh, it definitely allows uh, borrowers to adjust their calculations and they could not uh, find, uh, if they cannot find qualified employees or were unable to restore uh, business operations uh, pre-pandemic levels due to the COVID related restrictions, which is a great, great thing. And then also a uh, business that took it, uh, a PPP loan may now also defer payments on their payroll taxes, which uh, was obviously prohibited by the CARES Act. So that's another added benefit as well. So uh, what I would like to move into is obviously the latest trends that I've actually been seeing the past couple of weeks um, and that in kind of where I've seen doctors really um, going right now. Um, obviously, we've been Definitely talking about uh, refinancing and consolidating debt and freeing up your cash flow, getting cash out. Uh, but I've also uh, been talking to a lot of the brokers, the practice brokers out there, um, and also have talked to many sellers um, on my own. They, I, I get a lot of calls from sellers. Um, and primarily, uh, dentists, there's a lot of dentists out, out there selling and wanting to sell. Uh, primary reason that um, I'm hearing is because they just didn't want to have to go back. Um, either because of their age, um, obviously, and or um, just because they didn't want to have to put up with this and then, um, and then also uh, have to change everything out in their office. So uh, the one benefit I think that's coming out of all of this is that it's also offering opportunities for growth um, for a lot of doctors being able to find those doctors looking to sell uh, with uh, mergers and partnerships as well. Um, so I think this has been a great opportunity for a lot of doctors to be able to just to get automatic growth within their practice. Um, it also gives the um, doctors that were looking uh, or are wanting to sell their practice, um, you know, maybe uh, now but cannot sell their practice now, being able to also work back as an associate um, in the practice uh, as well. So I think the mergers actually are making a lot of sense. So I've, I've used this for the past couple of weeks, but I think this is really something we need to really focus on right now. It's the things that we get distracted by are never as important as the things we get distracted from. I've used that quite often because I think, you know, based on what's distracting us right now is obviously COVID-19. Now the protesting and riots that have been going on, news and social media, um, and uncertainty for the future. I think that, you know, at this point, um, what is uh, creating, and, it, and without a doubt, you know, if I allow myself to get caught up in all of that, I find that I'm now becoming fearful of the unknown. I'm, I'm getting frustrated with what's going on out there. Um, I feel like things are getting out of control. Um, and uh, also, obviously, what's next? What, what are they gonna come up with next? Um, you know, and what are we going to have to face? And basically, will this ever end? I mean, it seems like it's just an ongoing thing. So I think that this kind of ties into what it is that I've been bringing up for the past couple of uh, weeks is, is the outside world distractions getting in the way of what's the most important in our lives and in our practice as well? Um, so let's, let's get back to what's important. Let's take care of you and your family. Uh, your business and your practice, uh, your patients and your team, and let's look for growth opportunities for the practice as well. Um, and basically, I, I kind of put together a little game for you so that you can maybe think about uh, things that maybe you have or haven't done, but have you created a, a, a safe and healthy environment for your practice? Have you created a plan for growth and success? Um, have you changed your marketing strategy in the practice? This is actually very important. Um, obviously, teledentistry, Perio Protect, two of the uh, really popular um, items on the list there uh, that are moving forward for a healthy practice and uh, freed up cash flow to afford, to really afford future growth and success. 
Um, so time to get a checkup is, is really what I'm saying here. It's, let's, do, let's do a practice snapshot. Let's look at what's going on within your practice. Let's fine tune your systems and see where the opportunities for growth are within the systems of your practice. Um, obviously, let's do a financial cash flow analysis and ways to free up your cash flow so you can actually afford future growth and success now. Um, marketing analysis, how effective is your current marketing strategy? Um, and then obviously growth opportunities. There might be growth opportunities all around you that you just don't know about. But you can also explore those opportunities and possibly give another a dentist an opportunity to work back um, as well. So what I'm, I'm offering, I know I never really do this, but <laughs> I'm offering a free one hour consultation uh, for a free practice uh, snapshot and review of the practice, a practice cash flow analysis, review of your marketing strategy, um, and to create a plan for growth and success. And um, if you'd like to schedule time with me, uh, please, there's all my information. And other than that, I really, again, appreciate your time. Thanks, Bob. Always, yeah, uh, always a privilege uh, to have your wisdom. And I can't thank you enough for all the people that you've helped. And I'll tell you right now is the great time to buy practices. We are, yeah. we are rolling in practices into existing practices. We're bringing practices together. Um, the best time to buy is on the backside of a downside. And yep. um, it's just extraordinary. So thanks for offering your service, especially yep. for, for free for an hour and the snapshot you plug into Dentrix, Eagle Soft and Open Dental and then, you know, do a cash flow analysis. So thank you for that. Absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm going to thank you so much for that. And then I'm going to move right next to you in the Brady Bunch file. We're going to go to Steve Parker. Steve is the uh, uh, editor and uh, founder and creator of the TPD, the Profitable Dentist Magazine. Steve, I love chatting with because he has the landscape of dentistry. He's plugged into what's happening all across the U.S. And Steve, uh, bring us the latest as to the trends. Uh, Steve is our trend forecaster. Steve, uh, he, he's going to let us know what's happening this week in dentistry. Well, that's a, a tall order, Gary. You may always make me sound like way more important than I really am. <laughs> you are. You are. You're a humble guy like everyone else and gal on this call, but you bring a, a great value to all of us. So thank well, you. I feel like that until I get home and Paula says, are you going to cut the grass? And then I just, <laughs> I'm normal again. So, um, and, uh, so uh, I bet three things I wanted to bring up. Um, that have come out of the last week's conversations. And as you know, I have a lot of conversations, do a lot of interviews. Uh, we have a new issue rolling out. So we have a lot of content coming into the magazine and there were, you know, there are a hundred, but I, I picked three that I think were kind of um, uh, uh, really critical right now, where we are in this process. You know, we shut down, we shut down the world. We sort of came back. We went through all the financing and PPP and all that. And um, so, uh, I had a really interesting conversation this week with um, a dent an attorney who kind of specializes in dental practices. And I said, you know, what do you see going on and what are kind of the big things that are happening? He said that he's seeing a, an uptick in uh, wrongful discharge claims already. And uh, so he made a, a, uh, some advice and I'm going to uh, find a way, maybe we can put this into the notes and I can figure out how to do that. Um, he said, for practice owners need to check and make sure that they have employer practices liability insurance, um, EPLI, employer practices liability insurance. I've been in business a long time. I never even heard of such a thing. And I called my insurance agent and I said, do we have employer practices liability insurance? And kind of explained what it is. And he said, that's a really great question. I have no idea. And so what it, it covers, so you have a general liability umbrella. But a lot of times what it doesn't cover is issues with employees. It's somebody outside your practice, but not an employee. So in this case, it covers claims that, um, that uh, are difficult when you're a practice owner to understand why it's wrong. You know, you're just trying to do the right thing. You're just trying to get back to practice and say you've got a, somebody who is making more on unemployment, doesn't want to come back, but you're back. Um, so what they say is, you know, I'm afraid of the virus and you say, that's awesome, but we're going to have to let you go and we hire somebody else. And so what my attorney friends shared was to be very careful that you treat everybody the same. So that if you let somebody go because 
you know, they're afraid of the virus, but then you hire somebody who had that same concern, but you took extra effort to cover it, you know, you're going to lose. Um, so it's, it's very touchy things that as practice owners, we've never had to deal with. Um, but two things, one is just be very conscious that if you're going to terminate somebody, be careful that number one, you do it the right way. Number two, you document, document, and document. Those are the next three. And then uh, on the back end, uh, look into the fact, look into if you have liability insurance that covers not a claim, but the uh, legal part. So you can spend $100,000 and win, but it costs you $100,000 to win, so, which is a big chunk. So look into that, uh, but the, the employment claims are on the rise. And I, I've confirmed that with two different attorneys that said they're starting to see a lot of wrongful discharge claims. Um, the second thing is transitions, and Bob kind of alluded to that, and Gary uh, even alluded to that, mergers and acquisitions. Um, I've talked to three transition people who do a lot of transitions, and they've all said the ma vast majority are on hold, and they're on hold because of the banks, and these are just straight purchases. Um, so the banks are saying, listen, you know, in fact, uh, two of them were approved on, uh, I don't know, like March 16th or 17th. And then, you know, we get an order to shut down on March 18th and they just said, we're gonna hold, we're gonna pause, put them on, all, on pause. So the issues sort of become for banks, they're not sure how to value, they're not sure how to, you know, look at, at um, you know, look at a practice that has now lost 25% of its revenue. Um, Gary is spot on. I've heard this over and over and over. If you manage it well, you can actually be in a better cash flow position than if you hadn't. So the banks don't know how to look at that quite yet. So what they might say is just pause. Well, if you were, you know, if you, if you turn 65 in, on April 1st and you've got the RV bought and you're ready to go, you know, you might find that you got to delay that through the end of the year. Um, the, uh, the other part of that is what I'm seeing is a lot of walkaways is what I call it. I'm not, I, I don't even have a name for it. Um, and if anybody else sees this, a lot of practice owners just say, listen, I'm 63, 64, 65, can't survive this, don't want to survive this. I'm going to go ahead and retire early. And they literally walk away. And or at most, they send a letter to, you know, their patients and say, you know, Dr. Jones down the street will uh, take your charts. Um, well, there's two things. Number one, your practice has value. Your charts have value. Your business has value, even if you choose to walk away. So, you know, handing that over to Dr. Jones is awesome, but, you know, it's a great windfall for him or her, but your practice has value. And I, I don't think a lot of practice owning dentists understand that. So I'm seeing a very large number. I could probably name you a dozen in the past week that are just walkaways. And, you know, I ask, well, why don't you just sell your, you know, sell your charts to somebody down the street? Don't even consider it. So um, those are just some of the things. The last thing is, is um, Gary and I have talked a lot about how you f uh, maybe mentally frame getting back to work, frame it like a relaunch, like your, you know, like you take this opportunity to back up and say, and Gary's very good at this, back up and say, what is it that I want out of my practice? out of my dental career, when I exit, what do I want out of all this? It's a great time to evaluate that, uh, take an opportunity to now say, okay, if that's what I want over here, and here's where I am, how do I get those two things together at a very unique time in history that, you know, hopefully doesn't come around again in some ways, but financially, I don't think it'll come around um, the opportunities that exist. So those are really the three big things that I'm hearing a lot of chatter about right now this week. And um, hope uh, in anybody's questions, you know, uh, post them below. But um, again, employer practices, liability insurance is a hot item. Ask your insurance agent if you have it. If you don't, it's, it's pretty cheap and probably a smart thing for the next year. Yeah, Steve, thank you so much. I mean, I love your perspective. I love how you give us landscape. I love how you have us look way far ahead and, and really prompt us to look at things that we, we're not used to looking at during this pandemic. Um, one thing I'll tell you, if you can't get the insurance, one simple way you said, you said three things, document, document, document. A simple way to do it is this way. I, this changed my life because I was sitting there doing the documentation and sending it to the employee. I have the conversation 
and I have the employee send me an email. Easiest way to date stamp it, easiest way to have them duplicate it, it comes from them. So that is the easiest way to manage that documentation piece. And from now on, every interaction that you have with somebody regarding their employment, like if you're sending them out on FMLA, um, your any conversation needs to have them write it up and send it to you within a 24 hour period. So thanks so much, Steve. Appreciate it. Nice little tip there and big game changing for us. Thanks, buddy. Glad you're here. Um, let's move on. I want to keep Tanya right before uh, Dr. Scarlett. Um, I want to get the guys who give us the intel, the data, the, um, the world of what's going on from the consumer perspective, the patient perspective. We have our man, Sean Stever, who, Stifler, who is a brilliant man in the world of Googling what's being Googled, what's, what should we be creating for our websites, what kind of content. Sean, I'll get your last name right. Help a brother out when he's walking wounded after he says your name. Help me out. We cannot hear you. So are you screaming at me and swearing at me right now? So that's, that's good. Hey, we God. There oh, there we go. Sean Stifler. But, you know, close yeah. enough. Close enough. Um, but thank you. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. And this is going to uh, dovetail right off of what Bob was talking about, a um, practice checkup. So let me show you this. And we're going to go over what to do now. Uh, we're getting this question a lot of what do we do now to generate new patients? Because we feel like we maybe lost half a year. Um, so do you run ads or do you invest in organic? We're, we're getting asked, what do I pay for? Do I you know, upgrade services, downgrade? Do I do new services? Where are the patients? We're, we're getting so many questions. So we decided we would like to put this together to, uh, together to answer this. So we're going to cover paid ads cost. One of the biggest pitfalls with advertising is a lot of people don't know what they're getting into. They just see an ad and they want to pay for it without um, real regard for cost and uh, or almost an approach of whatever it costs. I still want to do it, but that's um, a big pitfall and a, a good way to spend a lot of money and not get a result. You have an organic cost, some tips to win. We want to give you some takeaways that, that you guys can do. We're also going to go into what are people searching right now. And we're gonna go over core keywords to learn your visibility. So I just ran this in the United States for today, Invisalign Dentist. This was a client request. And they, they told me, Sean, I wanna run an ad campaign for Invisalign. And I said, no, you do not. Take a look at that cost per click. So if you'll see here, it's a very wide range. For one click in the bottom right, that can cost you $210, $211. For one little click on that ad at the top of Google. That's not a new patient. That's not a case accepted. It's not even a phone call. It's just a click. So in, in advertising, you need to get hundreds of clicks to generate a batch of calls that may turn into appointments, that may turn into someone that shows for their appointment. Then do they accept the case and all the other progressions. Um, and there's a wide range here. So depending on your market, there's different costs. But this is a very expensive way to generate cash flow. Extremely expensive. And a lot of people don't look at this, but this is what us as marketers look at, this database. So then I went to metro cities, uh, Miami's, LA's, Chicago's, and, and so on. And here's some of the top search terms. Again, we'll see here, look at this top of page bid. I assure you, you don't want advertising. It is extremely expensive for, you know, dentists for kids, Invisalign, dental implants, emergency dentists. Again, we need hundreds of clicks to generate a, a batch of calls. And then there's same progressions. Do they book? Do they show up? And so on. But there's another way to do this, which is organic. And the cost of organic is more time. So you need to invest in organic, publish content, interact with your community, have a fast website, but it pays off in dividends uh, in the, the long term, uh, substantially more than what advertising does. So today's consumer shops far more, and we've seen this in previous uh, meetings that we've done where we take a look at how much blog content people are searching, um, how many pages people are clicking through. So we know they're reading a lot more. They're gonna just click on your ad and then go down to some other website on the page and you're going to be charged for it. So why not be that authority where you are showing up for all these different search terms? So uh, again, a paid campaign is to pay a lot right now to potentially get a patient and um, it's a vicious cycle. So please don't get caught in it. You'll, you'll never get ahead just by paying 
for a, an ad campaign um, over and over. So if you need cash flow, I'm, I'm glad Bob went first. Let's restructure debt. Let's take a look at how Bob can help. What about case acceptance? What about the patients you have right now? Uh, can we improve operations? Gary Next Level Practice can help. And doing those things, uh, in our view, is a better use of your time and strategy deployment for right now. And then you can build your organic presence over time. So that's generating um, consistent, predictable new patient inquiries for a much lower cost per acquisition. So now we're going to get into how. So these are things that everybody here can do. You need to write blogs. Google is looking for fresh new content and so are consumers. So it's no longer just about pleasing Google. It's, it's really about pleasing humans too. Focus on one topic. Some blogs can kind of go all over the place. We just need to focus on one topic at a time. Um, and this is um, an SEO tip. We need keyword density. If a blog is about dental implants, we need to make sure that you're saying the term dental implants and talking about that subject um, in a robust, comprehensive manner. So stay on, on topic there. Post to social. Um, just start posting. Uh, Q&A videos. Those are very popular with engagement in your community. And I put selfie time. So you can just take your phone, turn it around, or you can flip the view on it um, and just start talking, answer um, questions, talk about your practice. What are you guys doing um, for sanitation and your services? You're open now. That content really helps. And when users start engaging, Google and other algorithms take note and will start showing you more. Um, funny to informative, so it could be any part of the spectrum. We've seen all of it work um, in contests. So a big takeaway would be think of a contest. Um, it could be for children's dentistry. We're seeing that's a really popular search right now. Probably a lot of parents that have been home with their kids. They missed appointments, whether it's orthodontic or just a normal checkup. Um, but you could do a contest that maybe um, includes a really discounted new patient special or free cleaning maybe. Um, that's going to be a, a really um, – hot ticket contest and it's to get comments and shares. Those are very valuable um, SEO actions. So that's something to take away too. You can think about what you wanna offer for your practice. I wanna show this, we focused a lot on Google Trends. There was some exhaustion with COVID-19 as we probably all feel it too, but just the interest in the topic. Um, the American people are, it's, it's really wearing them out. While it's important, there's, there's exhaustion and there was a new study that, that just came out recently. It was just a couple of days ago. And uh, it, it found some interesting topics about content, what people are interested in. So here you go. 40% of Americans uh, want to see stories about hope and inspiration. 93% of respondents are interested in non-COVID related content. And, uh, but there's a caveat here. People managing a chronic health condition like asthma or maybe some other re upper respiratory condition um, do want to hear about what are businesses doing for COVID. So there's kind of like this picnic of responses where people just want to hear about hope and inspiration, but there is a big group of people that want to hear about what you are doing. Um, and half of Americans, I found this interesting, are having trouble finding information on other health conditions because of coronavirus coverage. So think about content and how your potential patients are looking for dental content or whole health dentistry or all oral systemic connections or all these different questions people ask, but they can't find it because of COVID. So I wanted to share this because this study just came out. And so here's what we can think about that we should talk about. And this is, these are things that you can do. So they want to learn about what you do. Do you offer certain services? So we should talk about it and get your voice out there and heard. And you should outline safeguards put in place. You could talk about your new patient experience, paperless forms, a touchless experience, powered by Opera DDS. You could talk about these things, but then let's get back to business. Let's talk about what you do, what makes you special, how can you help patients? If you do it right, we'll show you real quick. Here's what you can achieve. This is a client of ours, but I wanna show you organically. You had 584 clicks for dentists near me. Emergency dentist near me, you have dentist converted uh, into an ad campaign. That's dozens of thousands of dollars a month. So you can do this right organically and here's his website traffic. And we wanna give you a parting gift as well. Um, so think about it this way, do it, delegate it or ditch it, All right? So do it means you're gonna do it and it's important to you. Um, and you're gonna to need to craft comprehensive content, publish it consistently, and progress is so much better than perfection. So just do something, just get your voice heard out there. If you need to delegate it, because you find it important, but you don't feel like doing it, uh, find a partner. So Dr. Genius, we could certainly help, but find a partner and get your voice heard and start building your online presence and ditch it's not an option, don't ditch it. There's a lot of people searching online. So what I'll leave you with is we're going to offer a free report.
pick two or three of your core keywords, things you care about, and we'll analyze where are you showing up online. It'll, it'll look like the chart on the right. Um, we'll take a look at what does it cost to gain traffic for those keywords. We'll just tell you how much it costs. A lot of people want to know. We'll even be able to see what your competitors are doing. So it may be useful information as we're ending this year, and we're really starting to think about even 2021. Um, and we can craft um, that report for you, complimentary, and we'll review it. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for offering that. And I'll tell you, it's really fun to see how, how your website performs. I happen to be in their home office. It was amazing. So, Sean, thanks for offering that service. And if you can pull uh, down this so I can get to our next uh, panelist, which is, you know, he too uh, will probably have his um, spouse tell him to go mow the lawn, but he's badass in my world. Um, this, guy, this guy has a vision of what's possible in terms of no touch or low touch dentistry, which we need in post pandemic world, but also what, what he and I are calling just do dentistry. And it's really about taking away all the downsides of dentistry and really automating everything so that it just runs like a machine and you could do your dentistry and focus and let the business run on autopilot. Brian Laskin is a genius and I'm so grateful to have him on this panel. Brian. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much for having me, Gary. And uh, boy, lots of good stuff that everybody's saying. And first, I, I want to say, like, look at Dr. Scarlett and Steve and Gary's backdrop. You guys look like you're in museums. You know, Sean and I are obviously the nerds of the group because we've got like gray walls behind us. Uh, but, but uh, you know, and I, I, Gary said the word that I wanted to use, automation. Because uh, right now, uh, well, first, I also want to back up what, what uh, Bob said, because I, I merged five offices in 10 years, uh, and it, everyone was phenomenal. And so that was not when things downslope for practice. So, so I would urge anybody, if you have questions, again, use the q and I've, I've walked the path many times. So if you have questions for Bob, or if you have kind of how to merge practices together, uh, uh, I, can, I can help, I can probably give some insight there too. But, uh, but most people's practices are like mine. The front office right now is absolutely slammed. We're taking people's temperature. We're doing all sorts of extra things that, and we have probably less people up at the front. And so I'm getting emails all the time now about how much people are loving the paperless forms and te teledentistry that we have now. Not just for the, it's no, we've moved on from the touchless piece that I think we've really, uh, talked about where it's really just survival right now because there's so much demand at the front and there's so many emergencies wanting to come in. And so automating that is absolutely key. And, you know, through, through Next Level, we have a great offer where if you go to operadds.com slash next level, complete 30 day free trial so you can try it out. Uh, both, you know, intake forms, consent forms. Uh, I've talked about them several times on, the, uh, on, on these webinars, so I won't go through list again but it's really about removing as Gary said touch points so it's uh, less cross contamination but really ongoing it's going to be about automation about freeing up your team I, I, I think the average person that works at the front office of a dental practice probably is an octopus because they're doing eight things at once and then then if the phone rings you expect them to convert that person into a new patient it's just, it's, they're at an unfair disadvantage. So free up some time, automate things for them. That's really what it's all about. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Brian. And thanks for providing that, man. I'll tell you, you came out of nowhere. We needed a solution. And now you become such a true partner. You're an incredible man. Thank you for being here. And thank you for giving us a solution. Not only the front side, but I have doctors already using it on the back side for post-op care. And it's like, if, you know, where we have to spend a little bit more time in the front end, we're freeing up the backside. So it's balancing out our, our, our chair time. So it's, it's become a huge, huge asset and resource. So thank you. And we'll keep that machine going. And I'm looking forward to keeping un unfolding it each week. Now let's go to our clinical expert on panel. Tanya Dunlap has some new information that you all want to hear. Tanya, thank you for being here. And you... Thank you for offering a solution of hydrogen peroxide because that is, who knew? Like if you would have known that hydrogen peroxide was the key element of you know, pre-procedural care, are you kidding me? Come on, Tanya. Yeah, so hydrogen peroxide is not so sexy. It's been around, but it's really useful. So you can, lots of good uses for it, antibacterial and now antiviral. Um, 
Of course, all of that, those studies were done on the original SARS virus, but they believe it to be, they researchers believe uh, peroxide also be very effective on this SARS virus. I'm gonna be quick because I wanna get to our specialist. I'm anxious to hear what she's got to say. So two things, two weeks ago, we talked about a patient masterclass that was coming up, oral health during a pandemic. This is really designed for your patients and the call to action is take your oral health seriously. Your immune system's like a battery. It can only have so many things hooked up to it to run well. Um, we need to have a robust immune system now and oral health plays an important part. So through the My Patient Care system that the Next Level Practice offers, these are automated messages that can go to your patients. They opt in. If they don't want any part of it, they don't get it, but they can opt in and then they have an option. And that course will be held on July 17th. That's a Wednesday evening, designed again for patients, very patient friendly, all the verbiage, um, with a Q&A session kind of back and forth between Amber, who's the moderator, and Dwayne Keller, who's our chief scientific officer. Um, if you want in on that, then you would just need to join into the My Patient Care System. The benefit of that is everything's automated for you. And if you want to do a warm up for your patients, um, just to let you know, we have a blog here. Um, this blog's always been available. It's at perioprotect.com. Top right corner, you say the latest. This blog here is oral health during a pandemic. You, you can scroll down. And if you're looking for content, like Sean was just talking about, we got lots of content here for you. There's at least 30 blogs, but you can put this on Facebook. The envelope here tells you, um, it, it's a way for you just to send it via email. You are also, everybody does it. So we just give you permission, lift anything you want off of our site and you can repurpose it as long as you are um, really a Perio Protect provider. So without further ado, I just want to tell everybody here, thank you for making this possible. I'm getting calls of people say, hey, I'm, I'm paying attention on Tuesdays or I'm watching you on the weekends or I'm sending the link to the hygienist. So these people really do care about what we're offering here. And Dr. Scarlett, can't wait to hear you. Yes, thank you, Tanya, for your generosity. And we, I, I mean, Dr. Scarlett, thank you for being here. What a privilege, a, a, an advisor to CDC and the WHO. And now we have you. And our group, we are so grateful. Thank you for taking the time and please share with us what we need to know. You're, you're, um, you're mute, there you go. There, you go. Uh, there I am. Uh, thanks so much, Gary, I really appreciate it. And I, gee, I'm learning. I've gotta go back and look at some of the other um, uh, uh, sessions here because I'm, I'm, I'm getting caught up in other areas too. So I've got three things that I want us to, to begin to think about. One is, is that, you know, what are the risks? Um, you know, what, how can we assess what the risks are in, in the oral health environment? And, um, and the third thing is, is that, you know, how can we mitigate the risks? And we can, we can really do this. We can do this. And, um, and the principles are pretty much the same as they've been before. We're doing a few more extra things, but this is, it's possible to do this. And so I've really had to calm people down and say to them, you can do this. <laughs> so if I have any message that you all can take with you um, out to some of your clients and people that you work with, we can do this. And I saw my first patients this morning, so I can do it too. So um, what I wanna say is that, you know, dental offices were closed only for emergency and urgent care, but dental practice is really changing in response to the emerging science. But what we have to think about is risk reduction with enhanced infection control measures and reducing aerosols as much as possible. And also know that the science is evolving. Gee, even uh, today, you know, there's new information that's coming out. And um, uh, one of the challenges we have right now is that testing remains a challenge. Uh, I think we'll probably see some sort of consensus panel this summer and kind of get to a better place on testing. But for the future, practices will really need to consider both resilience, and I mean the capacity to close and uh, continue in business, and, and that includes things like teledentistry, and also the capacity um, for, um, for reopening, uh, you know, not only the cash flow, but also um, thinking through um, how it is that you're going to serve your patients should we have uh, reclosing and reopening in, in certain local areas. All right, next slide. 
Are you showing slides? You got to share your screen. You got to share your screen. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So you go down to let's, share let's... screen at the bottom. Uh, hang on just a second. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Let's see. And let me go back and I will try to find that. That is under um, share screen and then you have to, it'll come up and it, wherever your presentation is, you click on that and then click share. Okay. All right. Let me do that. Okay. Okay. Are you seeing the PowerPoint? Um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna have to scroll back. There you go. There we go. go. Okay. All right. So, so here's the thing that I want to say. That, um, and I'll, let me let me do something else here. Sorry, this is new to me. Um, but not new to you all. And I, just it, back in 2012. Uh, the Lancet published an article which basically said, look at our airline traffic. Mm -hmm. And this was in Lancet 2012. And, you know, you just had to drop one, you know, virus in here somewhere and uh, a threat one place is going to be a threat everywhere because of our global aviation network and the connectedness that we have. So we've known this for a while. Uh, actually, we've done pandemic planning since after 911. And since that time, and I've been involved in some of that myself, and um, we've had smallpox epidemics. And here's a picture of, uh, you know, in Vienna, um, there was, uh, you know, pandemic. This is a different kind of PPE, not the kind where we're in now. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've had this. It's been with us. And flu has traditionally been the greatest risk for the world population because of the route of transmission, the respiratory We've had a we had a terrible flu uh, pandemic flu in 1918 to 1920, 75 million death toll. Um, we had the Hong Kong flu uh, in 68 uh, and 69. So pandemics might seem new to us, but they really not. So and I don't know how to advance this. It's not advancing. Should be lower left. There you go. Okay, there we go. So we still have a public health emergency. It was declared at the end of January. And we still have an emergency. Um, it was renewed on April 21st, and there's really no end date. So this indicates to me that we may have some reclosing. Uh, about 48 states are already uh, open. We have new interim, and I'm just gonna say interim, uh, ADA and CDC guidelines, because again, the science is evolving very, very quickly. ADA has, uh, the American Dental Association has a reopening toolkit and a hazard assessment, I think it's very good. Um, but I, I think a big, big uh, star to think about is to reinforce these infection control principles to reduce aerosol generating uh, dental procedures. Um, I think I've already gone over this, but let me go back. Wait, well, hang on just one second. Um, I don't know how to do this. Let me go back here. Sorry. No, you're just, good. Um, okay, let me go. Let me go back and uh, see if I can get this this screen back uh, again because I want to talk about this. And this is prions. Um, this is cleaning and disinfection because I get a lot of questions about this. Prions are the hardest things to clean. <clears throat> Um, and, uh, and you know, get rid of in the in the environment. We we may have that in the dental environment, but uh, it's the risk is very low. Spores are very difficult to uh, to uh, kill, but we can sterilize to take care of those. But all of these other things below there, including viruses, and um, they can be killed quite easily with our normal sterilization and high level disinfection. In fact, this virus is so great because soap and water will actually allow you to, um, if, in, and washing for 20 seconds will disrupt this virus. So this is the reopening and reclosing. We've seen this in other countries where when the uh, transmission in a local area is really high, um, then there's areas where they're reclosing. So you'll see there's a Titan, you know, where, okay, here's Italy and New York City, uh, uh, epidemic curve, and then there's a loosening of restrictions. Then there's another peak, there's tightening right before that, loosening. And so this is important. This is from Vital Strategies 
uh, located in New York, but we can expect that there may be, based on the virus and the virus transmission, there may be other periods of reclosing, not what we wanna hear when we're just reopening. Um, let's go back here. So if community transmission increases locally, dental offices may reclose. And um, checking with the local health department may be an important part of that. Uh, dental offices must prepare for both the resiliency and capacity for reclosing and reopening. And teledentistry can help to mitigate this strategy. I, I really do think that it's an important mitigation strategy. Not only does it help us be a little more paperless, but it also helps us to get to a place where um, um, uh, we can provide some continuity of care and also assess emergencies for whether or not we need to supplement that with in-office care. Um, the big questions that I'm getting is, are aerosols dangerous? So, um, and that's the thing that, that's really, we don't have all the information that we need because we don't have infectious dose. The air we breathe always contains some kind of solid particles or droplets, there's bacteria in the air, and it, that's therefore an aerosol. But then in the dental environment, we're also generating aerosols. So I'm learning more about HVAC systems now than I've ever wanted to know because that's an important part of this um, aerosol issue. The virus itself is pretty small, about 0.125 to 0.6. And um, these are really small particles. And those are the ones that we have to be concerned about because they do settle in the lower respiratory tract. Um, this is an article, and I'm, I'm not going to really bore you with too much science, but this is an important article because they took the folks from the Diamond Princess and um, put them at University of Nebraska. Um, remember the cruise ship that docked? And uh, some of the patients were taken to University of Nebraska. They did some sampling there. And what they found out is that um, when they looked to see where the PCR virus was, it was everywhere. It was on the air handling grates, about 80%, bedside table, 75% under the bed. How did it get there? Uh, about 100% of the time. So um, this is environmental contamination. Now, I want to just say something about that. It's not linked to symptoms per se, and this was personal air sampling and hallway sampling was also there. It was positive in the hallway, uh, in the uh, ICU of the hospital and also in the quarantine area. Um, now, what does that mean? Is that, in, is that gonna be sufficient to transmit disease? We don't know because we don't know what the infectious dose is, but there is contamination. So that's why cleaning and disinfection is the most important thing uh, that we need to do. In fact, the new CDC guidelines that came out on uh, March 19th say to wait 15 minutes between before you clean a patient room. And that's, that's a long time. But it's important because this allows any of these aerosols to settle and then they can be cleaned up. So um, this was the, one of the problems with this study is that it was a low number of patients and the contamination was well beyond uh, six feet. So uh, this thing travels. Um, uh, I don't know why this is moving forth, but uh, let me go back. Uh, let me go back to this see if I can get it back. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I'm having a little trouble with my, let me stop share and then I'll reshare. How about that? Um, but I, I want to just say three things about this is that um, one is that here's dental practices right now. Um, we're moving from room to room burns PPE. So that's something that we're going to have to change. Fewer patients, um, we're seeing fewer patients and we're having lower collections. Uh, but the good part about it is we're taking more time for each patient. We can do more with each patient. Um, I looked at the Health Policy Institute and 70.4% of the dentists surveyed, there were about 5,000 dentists who responded to the Health Policy Institute at ADA. 70% uh, said that they were open, but they had a lower number of patients. About 19.7% said it was business as usual, which I think that's some of the good news. I, I wanted to put, um, uh, uh, it's not even half full. We're about three quarters full right now. The patient volume, 27.8% uh, patient volume, of 76% or more the pre-COVID days, and 29%, uh, almost 30%, or 51 to 75% of the week you know, June the 1st uh, to, compared to a pre-COVID week. And patient collections, uh, they were down um, only about 15% uh, 
um, collected 76% or more of what they did in a week um, pre-COVID. Uh, but 25% um, collected between 51 and 75%. So I'm saying that the glass is not half full, it's three quarters full, and we're getting there. It's taking a little bit longer to, to utilize and do these new, um, uh, new procedures, but uh, you know, we are getting there. So I think there's, gonna, there's slow progress on this, but um, uh, we've seen a, a lot of dental offices open. Um, I do wanna say too that, um, and I'm gonna skip a couple of things here, but uh, let me go. You don't, you don't see your PowerPoint, uh, Dr. Scarlett. Oh, okay, you don't, <laughs> sorry. No, I know you were going to reboot it. We, I, I don't see it up. Um, no. Yeah, you just you have to share on the bottom again. Okay. Bottom. There yeah. Go. There You're we on. go. Okay. Yeah. So, there it is. And okay. uh, presentation yeah. mode, if you could. Uh, presentation mode. Yep. Yeah. There Sorry. We go. Yeah. Can you tell this is my first time? Well, <laughs> glad. I mean, I know you're an author in dental ec, but to do this live, I appreciate it. Oh, no worries, no worries. Well, it's new for me, so I appreciate your uh, tolerance of my, uh, my screen issue here. But I, I think it's really important that we, we, this is really three quarters full. We, we do know that, that there is an occupational risk in, um, by the Department of Labor, um, and they write uh, about 966 workers for prolonged close contact and the uh, opportunity to have uh, contact with a patient with COVID. So we know that there is a, a, a high risk. And, um, and in fact, dental hygienists, uh, respiratory therapists, dental assistants, uh, general dentists, that is the order of, um, of risk. And then you have orderlies, family and general practitioners after that. So mitigating this risk though is, is is possible and, and you just have to be very thoughtful about this process. Uh, and using the enhanced infection control, can you can see the screen now, right? Yes, we can. Yeah, one of the big things is getting rid of the waiting room or moving the chairs in the waiting room. And I've been to several offices and tried to help them think through what's the process for you know, getting, um, uh, getting a good flow and also to have your enhanced infection control. And that's moving the chairs at least six feet apart in the waiting room, getting rid of the toys that are in the waiting room, getting rid of the, uh, the magazines and all that and, and have a clean waiting room. And some people are having people uh, wait in a car until they're caught. And, and that's a really great way to mitigate, uh, you know, any kind of, uh, you know, prolonged contact. And having that paperless virtual front office transaction. Boy, I heard you all talk about that too, and that's important. Reducing aerosols, especially the air water syringe, scalers, and hand pieces. And again, that one thing that 15 minutes, you got to schedule for that. 15 minutes prior to cleaning, you've got to schedule for that. So, and so uh, let me just go back to this. Um, so, I've worked on Ebola and um, I, I trained over a hundred of my heroes who went to West Africa for the Ebola training. But um, the, the principles are very much the same. Now, Ebola has uh, got a case fatality rate that's you know 50 to 70%, even with good healthcare systems. We've got um, this COVID-19, which has uh, a case fatality rate that's probably somewhere between two and 5%. 20% of people over 80 years of age, but um, the, the principles of, in, of infection control are the same and the training is the most important thing. And we spent a lot of time training uh, healthcare workers to go to West Africa to fight the Ebola. So, but the new normal is, you know, this face shield, um, goggles um, and gowns. This is something new, shoe covers, um, even hair covering and trying to reduce the aerosol. So it's all possible to do this. That's our new normal. It's not going to go back to the way it was, but again, the most important thing of all that I can say, and if you uh, take one thing away um, from my talk today, hand washing is just so important. This virus is not some superpower uh, virus. It is killed very easily with 20 seconds of washing, three happy birthdays. You can do a surgical scrub in 40 to 60 seconds, and I trained a uh, and uh, uh, several people who said, oh, I know how to wash my hands, but they might not get to the backs of their hands or in between their fingers, and that's what's really important as well. So um, I, I would encourage you, this is a CDC 
a hand washing poster, I would encourage you to go take a look at that um, and review hand washing uh, again and put it up in the office. This is a great thing to put up in the office. I need, um, one, I need it from my son after he uses the restroom. So I'm going <laughs> to. There you go. It's just, you know, it's just what your mom used to tell you, you know, hey, wash your hands. Um, and I think that, that this is also important too. This is from the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, which is part of CDC. And it's a hierarchy of controls, really important. Elimination is one of the, um, is much more effective even than PPE. And you see PPE is the least effective in terms of uh, hierarchy of control. Substitution, um, it's hard to do that with, with COVID-19, but engineering controls, and this is where our um, uh, HVAC systems uh, become very important to get the right number of air room exchanges. Administrative controls, those are your training, training on infection control. We've got to go back and look at the workflows. We've got to go back and look at the uh, infection control training and then get the proper PPE. And a lot of folks are having a very difficult time getting PPE. Um, I think that, uh, let me just see if I have this number here. Uh, a lot of people were having trouble getting PPE. There were only, uh, let's see, the latest data from June the 1st was 41% uh, of dentists had uh, masks, N95 masks for greater than 14 days. So, you know, there's a lot of folks who don't, who are still having difficulty getting these masks and, and finding them is almost a job in and of itself. How about trash bags for gowns, Margaret? I mean, I, we have some team, some teams wearing trash bags, uh, believe it or not, because they ran out of gowns. Well, you know, that's a fluid resistant. It's really not a bad thing. And you can see, you know, we actually had in our hemorrhagic disease um, handbooks that we re revitalized in 2015 for Ebola training, we actually have a how you can make it yourself and in, in that a fluid resistant gown. And this is, a, you know, it's the same sort of steps, hand hygiene, personal protective equipment, a designated area. And this is also important when you're taking off um, your uh, PPE to put it in a designated area. So you you separate the dirty area from the clean area and having a trained observer, you might think you'll be able to do this and you might be able to do it 99 out of 100 times, but you know, it's really helpful to have a trained observer, either a dental assistant and in dental schools were saying, hey, have two students working together and practice, practice, practice. We uh, have the young women in the office that I work in to come in and practice and put it on and they sort of had fun with all the PPE and um, taking it on and, and taking it off safely. Uh, and limit the caregivers. Um, uh, in the room. It used to be that we'd have five or six people coming in and out of room with Dr. Scott, how about this? Uh, that's something that's, that we're changing as well in, in our workflows. And that's really important to emphasize um, as you go out and clean and disinfect 15, uh, 15 minutes between patients before you clean. Again, I just want to emphasize this Ebola, the case fatality rate was really high. And we're somewhere between SARS and, and uh, the 1918 flu is still higher than what we would like, but it, it's, um, it's not as high as um, other pandemics. And the risk reduction is the same. Look, washing hands and uh, using your disinfectant uh, bleach um, in the, the areas in which we worked was the cheapest way to take care of things. In many dental offices, you can't use bleach because um, it will, um, cause some corrosive um, issues for some of our equipment, but there's high level disinfectants that work quite well. You just follow the manufacturer's directions, clean and then disinfect. And you see this tape on the floor. I love this and I've started doing this. This is something we did in Ebola training, but, um, but having the clean and the dirty areas designated by, here's the tape, you know, here's the clean area and here's the dirty area. So it's just a, an easy tip. CDC has something about donning and doffing on the website, and I'll, I'll provide the website to you at the end of this, but um, this is the order of donning and doffing, and sometimes people get confused about the order, and it's really important. Again, this is something else that might go in the operatory to look at the order of putting on and taking off the various PPE so that you're not contaminating yourself or the areas around yourself. And again, we've talked about this already, um, and this, and we're going to have these cycles of, of, of uh, opening. Um, 
we kind of went over this and the aerosol issues, but the air exchange issues um, that are, are really important to notice too. Contact an HVAC engineer so that they can tell you what the air exchange is per hour. Um, it's just to give you an idea, um, 12 um, air exchanges per hour, um, you know, uh, it, it would require about 35 minutes for removal or settling of aerosols in minutes. Um, we like to see, um, you know, 10 to 12, uh, you know, air exchanges per hour, um, but you'll have to wait longer periods of time if the air exchange in your particular dental office is less than that. Uh, let's go on to the next slide here. Um, so uh, teledentistry is also a, a good way to assess emergency patients um, and to determine whether or not they need to come in for in-office care or if their emergencies can be handled um, in, in another way. I, during this closure of dental offices, I had a lot of people who called who'd broken teeth. I think there was stress levels who <laughs> were pretty high. I, I don't know if anybody's done any surveys but um, I think there was a lot of fractured teeth during this time from Brooks and whatnot at night. Um, teledentistry is a good way to reassure folks and say, hey, you know, um, it, it sounds like uh, this is something that needs to be taken care of when we reopen and to reassure the patients. And I certainly did that with teledentistry during the closure. Um, DentaQuest just finished with a survey and four out of 10 dentists are using or thinking about using teledentistry. So that's new information too. And that's one of the things that's really shifted uh, during, uh, you know, the closing of, uh, of dental offices and now that they're reopened. I think incorporating that for informed consent, for patient intake, and uh, also sometimes for transactions uh, such as not having to pass money or uh, checks or even cards back and forth, but it's another way to do that. Um, so I just want to say that two things. That, that this was the picture of the hundred, some of the hundred people that I trained, who were frontline healthcare workers uh, for Ebola pandemic. We've we've been working on pandemic preparedness for a long time. Um, one of the key issues that came up in this was when uh, WHO declared that there would be a pandemic, and then the Surgeon General right after that said that uh, hospitals um, were going to be closed for um, non-emergency uh, procedures uh, and for, um, uh, you know, for the, just without a time frame, I knew kind of what was going to happen after that because those were the two key points um, that are part of the pandemic preparedness. So we've, we've had a pandemic preparedness plans in place for a while. And um, after uh, the Surgeon General did say that, that uh, any kind of elective surgeries would be, could be postponed, um, we started to put this plan into place. And while none of us uh, anticipated that those plans would ever be used, we've had these plans for a long time. And, um, uh, you know, we, we were prepared and um, I think that, um, uh, the, the basic principles of infection control are the way to mitigate the risks um, for not only for COVID, but gee, we've got so many other things, uh, you know, we, SARS-1 and tuberculosis and other kinds of things that we have to be concerned about. So our enhanced infection control, uh, the new ADA and CDC guidelines, if you haven't read them, I'd encourage you to look at them, but please remember they're interim. And as we're getting more information, we're going to have final guidelines. But science, you know, gets partial answers slowly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, we're right. all students right now. None of us are. None of us are really experts. We're all students, and we're all in a learning process. So. Well, we're grateful to have your uh, student expertise. I'm going to say <laughs> your expertise because you've dealt with other um, pandemics, and now to bring the the information you did today was great. So, Dr. Scarlett, thank you for joining us. Um, her, we put your information up if anybody would like to get more information. And to my fellow colleagues, we are over time. I want to acknowledge uh, that we ran a bit over today, and I wanted to say thank you for your service and care for week 14 complete. Margaret, thank you, and my team. Thank you. Love you guys. Have a great day, everybody.